G'day friends, it's Andrew here again from Nature's Image Photography and in this video I'm going to take a second look at the autofocus features that were recently updated on the G9 in version 2.4. Before we start, if this is your first visit to my channel, be sure to subscribe while you're here. And if you want to show your support for the time I spend making these videos, you might like to buy me a coffee. You'll find the link in the information below. By the way, this video is a follow-up to the first one I made after the firmware update 2.4. If you haven't done that firmware update yet, or if you just want to check out that video, I'll put that link in the details as well. So in my first video after the firmware update, I showed my first test using the single area focus mode with human detect enabled. Here's a clip from that video, and you can see that with a small focus area, Selena had to be on or very near the focus point for the human detect feature to kick in. If she moved away to the side it would lose her and go back to focusing on the centre point. Now it occurred to me while I was putting that video together that if I expanded the focus area it would do a better job of staying on the human subject and thanks to some comments from my viewers I decided to put that idea to the test. For things like this it helps to have a willing and cooperative subject so thanks yet again to Selena for the assist. So we tried a similar test a week later using single area focus and this time with an expanded focus area. This is easily done. You can increase the area using the touch screen as I'm doing here and also by using the rear control dial while the focus area is highlighted. Now making the focus area even larger. Put it to about the middle. Okay, so now walk in. And, okay, so we'll do the same thing where you'll move around a bit. So move left and right and up and down and it's following you. Turns green if I put my thumb on the button. Go a little bit further over that way. Still following you. Yeah. Lost you now. Come back towards the centre. It's found you. Okay, come closer. Okay, go that way. Yeah, still got you right over to the side of the picture. Come closer again. Okay, do a spin. Still following you. Yeah. As you'd expect, the larger focus area keeps the camera locked on the subject for much more of the time, losing her only when she moves a long way to the side. And that answers one question, but it raises another. If I have to maximise the focus area to be sure of keeping my subject in focus, why use this option at all when I have the Human Animal Detect AF mode that covers the whole frame and is now so much improved with the new firmware? So it was time to take a closer look at both autofocus options and these were the questions I wanted to answer. 1. What's the difference between using Human Animal Detect autofocus and Single Area autofocus with Human Animal Detect enabled? And two, when am I more likely to use one option or the other? I thought the best way to test this out would be with not just one, but a group of subjects. So for once I gave Selena a break and decided to have a go at some pelicans. I'll start with the Human Animal Detect option, which is the first item on the list of autofocus area modes that you find by pressing the function 1 button. And while we look at this shot, I want to point out one little detail that can be a bit confusing until you get used to it. You can see that the AF mode I've chosen is Human Animal Detect, but below that is a box with the words Animal Detect Off. So, is Animal Detect on or isn't it? Well, you need to pay attention to the top line. That's the one that tells you what mode you're in. You press the words Animal Detect Off if you want to turn Animal Detect Off. So, when that box says Animal Detect On, it means it's currently turned off and you have to press that to turn it on. It might just be me, but it messed with my head a little bit until, like I said, I got used to it. So, back to the pelicans, and I start by switching on the Human Animal Detect AF mode. Right away you can see the camera identifies potential subjects and puts boxes around them. The yellow box tells me this is the animal the camera has chosen as the most likely subject, and the white box tells me there's another option there as well. Now if I click on the joystick, the yellow box becomes a target, and if I press again, it switches the target from one animal to the other. Using that joystick, I can easily switch back and forward to select which subject I really want to focus on. Now when I press to focus, the target box turns green, telling me I'm focused and ready to shoot. 
So Human Animal Detect finds potential subjects, identifies the most likely, and gives you the option to make your own choice using the joystick. And of course, if you have only one subject, which happens far more often, the AF system will find it no matter where it appears in the frame, so right away you're ready to focus and shoot. It's quick and it's very accurate, even more so since the firmware update. Now let's compare that to using single area focus with human animal detection enabled. You'll notice I've gone back to using a small focus area starting in the centre of the frame. Neither of the subjects is in the centre so the camera doesn't immediately find them, but now I can use the touch screen to specifically identify which subject I want to focus on. Now with me choosing the target, the camera puts a rectangle around the animal and I'm ready to focus. Notice that pushing on the joystick now only returns me to the centre focus point. It doesn't toggle from one subject to another. I've chosen my subject manually and the camera is going to stick with that. But all I have to do is touch the other subject on the screen and the focus switches. Next I tried selecting the seagulls. In the other focus mode you may have noticed that the system didn't identify them as a potential subject so there really wasn't any way to focus on them. Now I can touch one of the seagulls on the screen. The camera still doesn't recognise them and put a focus box around them, but I can still focus on them because now the single area focus point comes into play, because while the camera doesn't recognise the subject, it still focuses where I tell it to. So as this demo shows, single area focus combined with human animal detection lets you select your own subject and know the camera will stay locked on that until you change your selection. The fact that you're working in single area also means that you can tell the camera what to focus on even if it can't identify a human or animal subject. If there are no animals around you can quickly switch the human animal detect feature off, but on the other hand you probably won't need to because with no animals in sight it will work just like normal single area focus anyway. Ok let's look at a little summary of what we've seen so far. Using the regular human animal detect function, the camera automatically finds your subject no matter where it is in the frame. The joystick can be used to lock focus onto a selected subject and to toggle the target from one subject to another. Using single area focus combined with human animal detect, the system identifies a subject only when it's on or very close to the focus area, although as we've seen the focus area can be expanded. You can manually move the focus area from one subject to another, and you can use the single area feature to tell the camera to focus even in places where it can't find a subject. So as you can see each method works a little differently and each has its strengths, but I'm seeing potential weaknesses too and here are just a couple. In human animal detect the camera can miss a potential subject and if it does you're going to have a hard time getting it to focus on it. And with the single area focus you can expand the focus area to take in more of the frame, but then you lose the ability to target individual subjects. Now as I say all this, I have to point out that this entire demo was done on a tripod and things could be done quite differently with a handheld camera. I should also remind you that I'm just getting to know these features for myself, and there's probably a lot more to this subject than I've covered in this video. So I'll be very interested to read the comments, because like I said in my last video, you're never too old to learn. So finally, you might be wondering if I've reached any conclusions, and I think I am getting a clearer picture of how I would or wouldn't use these features. With single area, I like the fact that you can manually select what you want to focus on. You've seen me doing it here using the touch screen, but you could also do it with a handheld camera using the old fashioned focus, compose and shoot method. But all of that takes time, so it seems to me this requires subjects that aren't moving around too much, and that rules out an awful lot of the wildlife I'm likely to shoot. I do think this option would be really well suited to shooting something like a party or a wedding reception, where you have a lot of people around and you want to select who you're going to focus on one at a time. But for the majority of my wildlife and portrait shooting, I think for now I'll be sticking with the human animal detect mode. The camera's ability to automatically find and track a subject no matter where it is in the frame is really impressive, and the joystick option means if I have to switch between subjects I can do it without taking my eye away from the viewfinder. So for active subjects from people to birds in flight, where you need to spend less time fiddling and more time shooting, this seems like the far more likely option. So for what it's worth, there are my observations so far. I'll still be using single area autofocus a lot, but with human animal detect switched off for shooting landscapes and other subjects that don't involve people and animals. And there are times when the animal detect mode lets me down. 
On this occasion I had to switch to single area focus when the camera had trouble distinguishing between the birds and the flowers. But for the most part, while I've been practicing, and I practice a lot, I'm finding the human animal detect mode, which is the first position on the AF area mode list, is doing a fantastic job and it's going to be my go-to option into the future. So now a very big thank you especially for the rare few people who made it right to the end. I've certainly enjoyed getting to know these functions better while making this video, and if you've learned something as well, then mission accomplished. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe before you go. I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.